All right, our next panel is Music and Movement for Social Change. Please welcome the moderator to the stage. That's me? Okay. Okay. Well done. Hey! Yali! Thank you. To the left, so to the right, right to the left, to the right, to the left. Come on, to the right, to the left, to the right. <laughs> Yali, how are you doing? Hey! So we're going to switch things up a little bit, OK? We're going to have fun. We're going to have fun. My name is Janet Boke Egina, and I'm from Tanzania. Thank you. And I'm also a Mandela Washington Fellow 2018 from Indiana University. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll be your moderator at this session, and we're talking about music, how music can bring about change into, into our society. So I want you guys to be very, very interactive, OK? And not to be overly presumptuous, but I know a lot of us listen to music, right? We love music, right? Yeah. I love music so much that I wanted to be a singer, but unfortunately, my voice said, no, not for you, not for you. So I'm a TV host, and I love it. I love being a host. I love making content, creating content. Being in such a creative industry is just so good to me, and I love it. And I've been doing that for 10 years. And talking about being in a creative industry, I would like to introduce to you my wonderful special panelist. Now, he's a dancer, he is a community activist, and he's a director for Next Level, which is a hip-hop initiative. He's from the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for House! Hey, 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 hey. Thank you so much. He is an award-winning artist. He's a performer. He's a founder of Music for Change. And his fans call him the Young Obama. And guess what? He's a Mandela Fellow 2015, all the way from Zambia. Give it up for B. Flo! Hey! Hey! Give it to B. Flo! Hey! Oh! much fun today. Guys, keep your questions. We're going to have questions really soon. So what I'm going to do is ask them a few questions, then I'm throwing back to you, OK? First question. Oh, House, thank you so much for being here. It's wonderful being here. Thank you, Booker. So for your, tell me uh, your personal experience as an artist. How have you used it to make social change into your society? So I think that um, the arts in, in general um, is the thing that uh, makes us curious about each other. Yeah. So when you think about people that you do not know, like cultures and communities that you're unfamiliar with, mm -hmm. you know, you always try to see yourself in those communities, and art helps us do that. So what's the music like? Yeah. You know, how do people move? You know, how do they dress? What's the fashion? You know, what's the visual arts, the culinary arts? All those things are kind of what's what kind of lives inside of us and makes us a little bit more open to see ourselves yeah. and other people, I believe. So what I do, like, particularly, like, is I run an organization um, called Urban Artistry, Inc. Yes. And we are focused on dedicating our time and energy to preserving urban dance and music culture here in the United States. 
And that, that, that means like not just what's popular, but also looking at the art forms that um, are part of the diaspora. Yeah. The art forms that come before hip hop, looking at funk music, R&B, to blues, to um, movement like flat footing and buck dancing, these types of things that inspire all of us. Nice, nice. Uh, B Flow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your yeah. Mandela Fellow 2015. Yes. How has that experience helped you in your journey as an artist? Well, big shout out to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been a good journey. So before I ever applied for, for the fellowship, first of all, I was doing a lot of uh, voluntary work back home through the Zambia Association of Musicians. And we, we used to tour schools and teach young people about the prevention of HIV, testing, treatment, uh, and many other social issues that we thought young people are interested in. And it was through that network of people that I used to meet through the Zambia Association of Musicians that I met somebody uh, from the United States that introduced me to, to, to the Yali opportunity and told me to say, with the amount of passion that you have and you know, the energy that you put into the work that you do, I feel that you should apply for this wonderful program called the Mandela Washington Fellowship. So this was some, some time in 2014, around uh, September. And I looked at, I tried to click the link uh, that, that, that this person sent to me. And when I looked at the questions that were, were there, yeah. I just felt like these questions were designed for me and I just had no second thought about it. I went ahead and started applying for the fellowship. Uh, thank God um, I was selected and I came to the United States. Uh, big shout out to Wagner College. <laughs> so I went, to, I went to Wagner in Staten Island and the first thing that we learned, one of the, the, the first lessons that I, I, I picked up from Wagner College was the power of networking, uh, collaboration, yes. and partnerships. Yes. So that just, that for me was, was so amazing. And the moment I learned about networking, I even told myself to say, it starts now. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna wait for myself to go back to Africa and start networking. The networking begins here now yeah. with the 25, uh, with the 24 other fellows that were in the class at Wagner, the networking begins. Mm -hmm. With the site visits that we would make to, these are the places like Generation Citizen, uh, Lifestyle for the Disabled, the Clinton Global Initiative, and many other places that we visited on the site visits. I took advantage of that and started to utilize those opportunities. Yeah. It, was, it was a chance for me to meet people that could actually help me even in designing my leadership development plan. Because I know that right now, for our 2018 fellows, obviously you are thinking to say, what's the best way to put this document together? How am I going to make sure that I leverage this opportunity and when I go back home, I, I do the best and I'm not at the level I was before I traveled to the United States. And so the networks that you're making here, all these people that you're meeting here are the actual persons that are able to help you come up with that leadership development plan. So it was the members of staff at Wagner, yeah. my uh, other fellows at Wagner, the people during the site visits yeah. that helped me come up with this uh, leadership development plan. And then after Wagner, we came to the summit. Mm -hmm. And at the summit, we got to meet other people even yeah. during the, the expo. And those other people, you still continue to you know, exchange business cards. Exactly. Thanks to IREX and, and the State Department for making sure that we have those cards that we're able to dish out to different people and yeah. we, we keep the, the network going. And one amazing part of uh, the summit for me was getting a shout out from the president, you know? Oh. <laughs> it, was, it, it was so amazing and uh, I kind of felt emotional and went back to my room after that shout out and I, I wrote a song about it and I, it, it was amazing. I was singing about my mom and how I wish mom could see yeah. how mm -hmm. her son who once suffered, who was, who was in, a, in a position of selling on the streets, yeah. 
is now able to, to mingle with all these wonderful people and making all these uh, strong connections with people. And I was singing, Mama, you the genesis of my story. Why should you be absent in victory? Mama, you the genesis of my story. Why should you be absent in victory? Oh, oh, oh. oh. So, so after the summit, I went for my PDE, and during the PDE, I also got to learn quite a lot of things yes. and also made use of those networks. Okay. So I'm saying this because I'm trying to encourage people that are going for their PDEs to say where you're going is an opportunity for you to meet people and continue to keep that connection going. Yes. Sometimes when, when, when you're placed in a particular organization, sometimes it feels like you are in a wrong place. Like that's how I felt for me because yeah. I'm a performing artist and I felt I needed to be maybe at say Akon's record label, Convict yeah. Music. Yes. But I was taken to uh, a place called OK Africa and OK Africa did not give me any platform to record. Uh, and so at some point I was thinking, am I in the right place? Yeah. But it's only making sense now after I had learned certain things that they were doing, like uh, web designing, like certain things like how to operate the back end of a website. Yes. And now I find myself in a space where after going back home, I got elected to the position of publicity secretary for the Zambia Association of Musicians. Okay. And what that did to me is what I learned from OK Africa happened to be exactly the job of the publicity secretary in the association. So sometimes you may think you're wrongly placed, but you still uh, get to, to utilize those skills. So it's been an amazing journey. And uh, back home now, we're doing a lot, of, a lot more collaborations yeah. with other Mandela fellows like Lulu Hangala from 2014. Yeah. And we're doing the Make Zambia Clean, Green, and Healthy campaign. We're working with the likes of Kupa Chiwomba, mm -hmm. the likes of John Chidi, who's here. Big shout out to John Chidi. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, <laughs> So John, John and I are actually working on an album to uh, promote the plight uh, of children with special needs. Yes. Yeah, so we're working together like that. And I've seen another fellow from 2018 by the name of Ayanda Ali Payne. Yeah! From, from South Africa. And we've worked together as well on a tour with artists like Common, Queen Latifah, Big yes. Naz, and many other people. So. I just want to encourage all the fellows here today that guys, the opportunities that you have here today, make sure that you utilize it to the fullest and never relent. Big up. Woo! We can, we can finish right there. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Is that when you got the shadow, was that the time where you got the nickname, the young Obama? Yes, so yeah? when, I, when I went back home, uh, when I got to the airport, mm -hmm. I was expecting to find my family waiting for me but I found my fans waiting for me. And, and, they, and, called, and they gave There was a thunderous it. welcome, and they were, they were shouting, Junior Obama. So it was... Beautiful. And, and that's, that's the new name, apparently. So we embrace it, and thank you. Beautiful. Thanks, Diali. House, back to you. Yes, How can you use dance movement to bring um, social change into the, into the society? So I think that um, when we look at art as a whole, and not just dance, yeah. right? We see that in every community, people have a voice, yes. right? And people want to be heard, they want to be seen. If you look at um, what the United States has done in hip hop culture, what young people did in the South Bronx, is that they were tired of being invisible. Mm -hmm. So they took what they had and they made something out of nothing. Right, just a few ideas that people had about music, about visual art, and about movement. They empowered themselves. And now you look at what hip hop does right now and what it is in the world. It's like our common language for the youth, right? Yes. You know, like you can go anywhere, you know, and <laughs> you can go anywhere. And like people will know something and be able to connect with music and movement that I grew up with as a young child. If it wasn't for, for hip hop culture, I don't know if I would be the, the man I am today. Um, hip hop was my cultural identity. 
right. as a child before I realized that I was a descendant of kings and queens. Right. You know. Right? Yeah. So trying to find that identity and trying to connect with something gave me the, the drive to want to do that for other people. Yeah. Um, and not just, um, not just about hip hop, but whatever people's cultural identities are, where they're at, where they live. Um, I currently co-direct um, a State Department un initiative uh, yeah. administered by Meridian International Center and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. It's called Next Level. Mm -hmm. And we travel to different countries globally yeah. um, with beat makers, MCs, DJs, aerosol artists, and dancers, and beatboxers. Mm -hmm. And we work with local um, partners and also um, embassies and consulates to provide training um, in these hip hop skills, but also with through lines of um, conflict transformation, yeah. entrepreneurship, community building. So for me, I think art doesn't have to be stagnant. You know, it doesn't have to be something that we do for fun. It can be our cultural identities as well. And it's something that we can use to connect with other people. So yeah. I think we definitely do that with, with Next Level. We've been to 24 countries so far, and, and that's led to many different opportunities. Um, in the last several years, I've been able to um, visit uh, Morocco, mm -hmm. Egypt, mm -hmm. uh, Central African Republic, Cameroon. In October, I'll be in Nigeria. Yes. So um, these, are, these are ways that not only I can share my culture, what I learned, and what I know about hip hop culture, but also what I can learn from people in the countries that we visit. So this type of exchange and this type of connection mm -hmm. is, it's human, it's, it's right, and it's art focused, so. Okay, nice one. Um, B-Flo, one of the things that I personally, maybe I don't understand, but I'm against, is when politicians use artists, especially during the campaigns. Mm. Yeah. What, what is your opinion when politicians use artists during campaigns? Yeah, uh, thank you for asking that question. Actually, when, when I... Have you ever done that, actually? I've never been used. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I've been used to spread a positive message, like to unify people, mm -hmm. peace. So uh, w when I went back home after the fellowship, the first thing, uh, the first project that we launched was called uh, Triple V. My vote, my voice, my victory. Yeah. And we were using this campaign as a channel to speak to young people, including people in my sector, in my line of work, music, yeah. uh, to say, do not allow yourselves to be used as vessels or tools of political violence and hate speech and any other thing that divides uh, the people you need to realize that your vote is your voice, and there in your voice uh, is where your power and your victory lies, and that what, that's what Triple V w was all about. Mm. So I don't, I don't agree uh, with artists that allow themselves to be used or to, to work as as people representing politicians that want to divide people, especially when it's going to be about uh, go and hurt this side, go and kill your friend from, from the left side because you're from the right side, or go and attack this other person. Mm -hmm. I don't agree to that. What I believe is musicians and artists are supposed to be people that unify. They're the ones that are supposed to bring uh, people back together because you know, prior to elections, sometimes tempers are high. There's so many emotions involved. You want your candidate to win. There's so many frustrations, and artists can only play the role of bringing the people together. So when we're doing the, the, the Triple V tour, uh, it was a nationwide tour in Zambia. I actually, uh, we, we did some music, and we would stage road shows to just go and speak mm -hmm. to the people. And this encouraged many other artists to want to join uh, and work with us. And through the, the US Embassy in Zambia, we also uh, did some celebrity panel discussions to discuss the role of celebrities in, in the electoral process. Yeah. And so we made some music, like we did a song called Victory to promote yeah. uh, the, the whole idea. And on this song, 
we, we were putting ourselves in the position of every other young person out there yeah. to say, guys, it's like we're making a pledge and we're telling ourselves to say, I can be successful without being used by a politician out there. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can actually just use my votes and my voice. And so we were singing together and we're saying, if other people have made it in life without necessarily having a force yeah. behind them, I think I too can make it. If they themselves have made it in life, I can also make it. Okay. So we were singing uh, a song called Me Too. Yeah. But uh, in, in Bemba we say Naine. Can somebody say Me Too? Me Too. I I'd like you to say it in Bemba like Naine. Naine. And maybe you can <laughs> add some melody and say Naine. 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 Yeah, so we were singing like Naine nkasange chuma chandi Naine ikawama life yandi Naine ikakwata victory Then you go Naine. I vote my voice my victory Naine nkasange chuma chandi Naine ikawama life yandi Naine ikakwata victory My vote my voice my victory Naine nkasange chuma chandi Naine ikawama life yandi Naine nkakwata victory my, my vote my, my voice my victory. victory if you want to hear some more of that come to the talent show tonight <laughs> <laughs> okay on that note is there a question from the audience anyone with a question okay <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I love that. okay I think the gentleman over there with the Tanzanian scarf right that's a Tanzanian scarf <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you. Uh, my name is Lupai. I'm from South Sudan. Oh. I'm a radio presenter and I run an organization which also uses arts to promote peaceful coexistence among South Sudanese. But there are so, some tendencies where musicians get jailed uh, because uh, of uh, some movements that they start and the musicians look up to us who are promoting their music and promoting uh, such peaceful coexistence messages to go bail them out. But also most times we do get silenced. So I need to find from you, uh, what are those strategies that you use to make sure that the government does not hunt you down, especially if you, if you, if you share some messages which, which might be pricking uh, the, the, the politicians or the president in a way. And um, South Sudan is also a divided community where musicians mainly sing for their communities, yeah, because they want to promote their community and maybe uh, their political affiliations. And most of the times, they are backed up by some politicians even without their own knowledge. So what would be that encouragement you give people like us who are trying to uh, keep using arts to promote peaceful coexistence in our societies to make sure we are not easily used? Because at the end of it, sometimes many people do it for the money. Mm -hmm. Okay, they need to get paid at the end of the day. So what is that encouragement you need to give us so that we keep pushing? Bifla? Yeah. That's a very powerful question, actually. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, I think it's, it's a known fact that right now in Africa, we are kind of losing that freedom of expression, right? That freedom of speech. And uh, it's up to us as young people to realize that we are the majority. Like any, every other person that has been on previous panels has been reminding us, we have the numbers as young people. Mm -hmm. And if we are speaking for ourselves, mm -hmm. we cannot allow anybody to step on us and shut our mouths. We need to speak up until we are heard. So uh, my encouragement is still centered around networking and the partnerships that we are creating through these groups. Uh, it, it's, it's quite sensitive and it's, it's not easy when you are working in Africa and you're doing songs, like one time I did a song called, called Polytrix. Uh, and I was saying there's a difference between politics and polytrix because other people are tricking young people and using them uh, for the same things that we're talking about here. And if you are going to get in trouble for doing such a thing and your fellow young people are just going to sit there and watch without defending you, then as young people, we, we are failing ourselves. So it's this network that we have 
that we need to support each other in everything that we're doing. When you start a campaign to talk about the freedom of expression, we should all come together as Yali and back you up. Even when, if you're gonna get in, into trouble, we should stand up for you and say, free this person because this person is speaking for us, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so we must continue to work together and never be intimidated. You are not alone. We are a big network with thousands of people in Yali. So let's work together and defend ourselves. Thank yes. You. I'd like to, I'd like like, to okay. uh, add to that question, if I may. I think whenever um, I hear such a, such a strong question, it, it makes me take a step back and remember my privilege, you know, like that, you know, I live in a country where, like, I can say what I want, yes. you know, politically. And, like, I just want to say, like, um, I, I agree with B-Flo, like, you're not alone. And, and I think that it's a, it's a call not to the person who says that they have the problem. Mm -hmm. It's for the community at large to be taking care of each other so you see where the problems are and you see that your community or someone in your community needs your help. I think it was a, another great man, um, Martin Luther King Jr. said, it's not our adversaries that we remember, it's our friends who stood by and did nothing. Right, now that's, that's another strong statement, but I think all of us know what that feels like. So in context, we're talking about art and we're talking about uh, speaking and expressing ourselves about our current conditions, you know, and I, I think that's everybody's right. Yeah. I don't care where you live. So support each other and, and know that there's, there's power in numbers. All right, next question. I think, yeah, lady over there. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Ayaba Gloria Ganyonto and I'm from Benin. <laughs> I was at Wagner College. Yeah, my question are for all you, the panelists. Have you ever been in Benin? And if not, don't you think it is time to visit my country, even if we are French-speaking country? <laughs> now, in your respective country, does the government has a law or policy that protects singers and their job? If yes, can you give more details? If no, what can you do if maybe tomorrow you are at a high position in your government to protect your singers? Thank you. Thanks. Who wants to go first? Wow, that's, that's a very, very challenging and powerful question. Uh, if God blesses me with or when God blesses me with that opportunity to be in that position of power. And I have been a singer myself, and I know the challenges that other singers are going through, that they, they don't have um, enough you know, support to be able to express themselves because maybe even the media is a bit intimidated. They, they, they feel like maybe if they play that music, for example, maybe there's a way that or something might happen, maybe they'll be closed down or something. So if I ever find myself in such a position, mm -hmm. I think that definitely I would push for more policies around you know, protecting uh, people that are in the media industry and the people that are in the arts sector to make sure that they are protected and they, they have you know, enough room to be able to express themselves because I, I feel in many African countries right now, we're we lacking that and musicians are not really coming out the way they should. And so that's part of the reason why I launched Music for Change because I realized that most of the music that we're doing now, it's good that Afrobeat is out there and people are dancing, but, but we're just singing about this girl and this, what I can do to this girl, what I can do with this girl. When there are so many issues that we're facing as a continent and we can, we can talk about them through our music. Yes. Mm. Yes. I have, I have not yet visited uh, Benin, uh, but now that I know you, I want to learn more about Benin, <laughs> and maybe you, you could invite me because we are together in Yali, and uh, I want to work with you. So thanks for that question. <laughs> uh, I, too, have never been to Benin, and uh, I'd love to go. 
Um, as to what we can do for, for singers and, and for artists in general, my approach has been a little bit different. Um, my approach has been to spend more time trying to connect the youth to elders in our communities. Um, I currently work on several research projects where I'm connecting hip hop artists like with um, blues musicians who are in their 80s and 90s years old. Like these are our elders and I feel like we've built our careers on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. So we're working hard not only to know them, but to take care of them as well. And in their, in their final years, we wanna show them respect because they deserve it. And that's how we want the future generations to treat us. So I think that work starts within ourselves. Like there's only so much we can do with our governments, but there's so much more we can do with each other. How we treat each other is also a reflection of how people from outside of our community see us. So that's my perspective and, and that's the work that I'm trying to do to say to people who are artists in general, if you want to have a future that looks better than the past, then maybe you should look back to the past and bring somebody with you. Yeah, so. good one, good one. Okay, we'll go over there. We'll go, we'll come to that, don't worry. I've seen you, I've seen you. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Fuari from Madagascar. Uh, I was at uh, Rutgers uh, University. Uh, I, uh, I run a nonprofit organization which fight against youth drug addiction throughout. So um, we do musicals and theater most of the time and uh, also a song. Um, my question is um, about um, Sometimes our um, uh, first enemy is artists, because you know, artists do um, uh, video clip, and uh, also sometimes we see it in movie where youth are uh, drunk, they uh, smoke cigarettes, and also they uh, smoke uh, cannabis. So it is it is broadcast uh, all. Uh, all over the country on the national uh, television. And sometimes we can't fight. We feel like uh, we are too small, or we are a too small organization. Even if, even if you try to, to get some ideas and um, there is also the financial aspect of uh, uh, the organization, uh, which cannot uh, fight against the, the big artists who can uh, spend a lot of money uh, in uh, broadcasting this uh, uh, clip video on, uh, on the television. And how, have you ever been in the same situation and how, how do you deal with this? Thank you. Biflo, wow. you're an artist, you're, you're a musician, you make videos. Uh, yes, um, I, also have, I also have a big problem with the content that a lot of artists are putting out today, you know, the kind of videos that are objectifying women, yeah. um, and what they are promoting in, in these videos, just like, just like with the movies. And that's why I feel that what we need to do now is to increase the numbers of those artists that are doing music for social change. And so it's good that we have people here, like the likes of John Chidi, and and many others that, that I know have been fellows before that we can, we can work together with and increase the numbers because if the majority of the artists who are there are the ones that are putting out content that is going to deceive or mislead people, then that's the amount of impact that it's going to have and, and then many more people will be misled. But if we have more artists doing positive music, then even the content that people out there will be receiving 
and benefiting from will be more positive. So let's just encourage numbers. I think that's how we can help each other. And that's why I'm, I keep talking about music for change and we're tapping talent. Even musicians who are already established, we bring them together and say, guys, let's work together and realize that we have so much influence, but we cannot continue to just sing about anything, but we can put out positive messages out there. But B Flo, a lot of artists say that the receiver, mm -hmm. like we want those kind of content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what sells. I believe that an artist is a role model. An artist is an influencer because of the special talent that you have. Yes. People are supporting you out there because there's something that you're doing that they are not doing themselves, but they are, they are rallying behind you because you have the talent. Yes. And so it means you are influential. If you're going to sing about positive things, that's what people are going to follow. It's the same as when artists uh, endorse uh, political candidates. Mm -hmm. When the artist tells people to say, vote for this person, you, you, you're believing that people will listen to you. So why won't they listen to you when you sing about something positive? So let's just create good content. Mm. Good one, good one. OK, another question. Yes. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Kapena Vetira from Namibia. Appalachian State University, Mountaineers. Yes, I run an organization that educates children through arts and culture. So we use performing arts as a, means for, uh, as a medium for communication. Yes. And the issue that we are having is that we are having young, we are, we are working between the ages of 9 to 16 and 16 to 24. But the young people between the age of 16 to 24, they do not want to to do music that is educational because we, do, we did record some music on education and all these things, but they do not want to perform. They want to sing the mother elves and the whatnot and the booty and the cash. <laughs> so I want to ask like, from your point of view, like, what is it that we can do to try and change their perspective or try to make this educational music more fun for the youth because they do not want to sing, please. No. That's a good one. I, you want to? Yeah, sure. Um, one of the things that I've noticed, you know, if you know, like a lot of current hip hop music, like in the United States, has a lot of negative messaging. Yeah. Um, and dance culture also has some of that stigma and pulls right into that. Um, thinking about solutions to how do you get. Uh, people involved. There's, there's part of a curriculum that I teach that's, that's uh, education-based, you know, that's uh, focus um, on positive things that young people can do, right? But there's also a second track that's competitive. Yeah. So the competitive track is, uh, addresses the world around people. When students leave my building, you know, they go out into a world, yeah. you know, and if, let's say, if they're dancers or if they're MCs, they're facing a different thing. So they have to compete in that community too. Like, so I think it's important, you know, to teach them how to use for, for instance, like MCs, like teaching them how to rap, like without having to use profanity. Yeah. Like, language is, is broad. You know, and you can convey what you need to say respectfully, yeah. you know, and that's, that's part of leadership. Mm -hmm. So I think even though there is a, a lot of negativity out there and sometimes young people will be drawn to it, but frankly, sometimes that's just the world that they live in. So we have to also teach them how to be uh, productive and proactive and how to survive that environment that's outside of our organizations. As leaders, we cannot deny young people agency and forget that when they're not around us, they might be going to a completely different situation and they should be prepared for that. So let's train them for their environments that they lived in as well, not just our primary mission and goals. And j okay. just to add to that, uh, I've, I've faced the same challenge with my record label, Music for Change, uh, where it's, it's difficult to get artists uh, coming and you know, signing with us because 
they feel we're gonna dictate that they should sing about positivity and not negativity, because they, some people believe that negativity sells, yeah. you know? So uh, I've, we, we've always tried to appeal to the media to say if, if you are promoting more profanity and negativity, mm -hmm. then you're influencing young people who have this talent to want to do exactly that because they believe you're going to promote it. But if you're going to promote more of the music that we are making, which has got a positive message and encouraging people about the empowerment of women, talking against uh, violence against women and girls, talking about HIV AIDS, then you have a lot of young people getting interested in also uh, making music uh, in that direction. So it's, it's still about numbers. We increase the number of the ones that are doing positive music, then we'll manage to kill the numbers of the ones that are doing negative music. Okay, um, last question. Unfortunately, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna have to go all the way for that. Okay, guys, come down, come down. Come down, okay. Which side? You decide. <laughs> okay, let's go. Calm down. I'll come back to you. Don't worry. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> um, it's been really inspiring. And with this training, I think never has Africa been more desperate for change than now. And I have never been more hopeful than this moment because I see a lot of changes happening. And then coming here has further inspired and ignited my hope. But um, I want to ask you, first. the first question is, at what point in your life did you discover music beyond a hobby, beyond just being a hobby? Because back home and in many African contexts, particularly certain community, um, people who have some talent, they are not encouraged because it is considered that you have to go to school, get education, become a doctor or a lawyer. And what advice do you also have for such people it is very difficult to change minds sometimes than to change laws. So what advice would you have for, would you want to give such people to encourage um, um, their children or world to get involved in music or develop their innate potential? Then my second comment is on the marginalized community because it's a demographic group that I care very much about. And I just want to know what do you do so many times when I visit such secluded places, you find an array of talents that, are, that people are unable to maximize their potential from the low and secluded places. So do you have, what advice would you give us as young African leaders that we can take back home, that can help to mobilize such talents, people who have talents in music, arts, to come on stage and be able to make the most of their lives? Thank you. Um. So in terms of uh, realizing that music is not just a hobby, but it's a, it's a talent that I could pursue as a career, I, for me, it happened at the age of eight. <laughs> so when people would compliment me for, for, for singing or for rapping or for singing another person's song, I quickly discovered that uh, I was destined to be uh, an artist. And so I just had to pursue it until it was time for me to do it. Uh, I was involved in a lot of things uh, during my high school. I was the president of the anti-AIDS club. And so music was also one of the channels that we were using to, to sing about or to sing about the prevention of, of HIV. So I discovered it immediately. And once I got into the music industry, it was easy for me to uh, quickly start looking at issues because I already learned about different uh, social issues and health issues and incorporated that into into my music. So uh, basically that's how it's been. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, would so you like, we're running out of time, so maybe in five seconds. I'll take yeah, yeah, thank you. So for me, um, my mother was my first dance teacher. Um, dance was free. <laughs> <laughs> so um, she was really into that. So. For me, like, it was a chance for me to connect, you know, with my mom in, in that way. Like, just having that interaction, her showing me something, me responding, 
her smiling was something that, that drove me to want to continue to be an artist. And, you know, I realized by the time I was 17 years old, my mom started entering me in competitions when I was four. Um, by the time I was 17, I realized that um, I didn't have all the tools I needed to be a professional artist in the way I wanted to be. So to, to answer the question, like, for all the people who are artists, like, I think it's safe to say that's not all that you are. And we want to be all the things that we are. We don't want to be half yeah. or a quarter of the things that we are. If you are serious about making art sustainable, then you will have to learn other skill sets. You will learn, have to learn how to be a project manager. You'll have to learn how to manage your books and do accounting. Yeah. You'll have to learn how to inspire people and be a motivator. You know, leadership doesn't happen like on a dream. It happens when you set out to do it. And when you set out to do that, you need tools. So equip yourself. Like, and, and to the second part of the question, um, I think that reaching out to marginalized communities should be something that we all do as we obtain success. Like, don't leave no one behind. Yeah. That could have been you. You know, that could have been all of us. So whatever I'm doing, I always try to do, include outreach programming, making sure that all my programming is diverse and we're reaching out to people who cannot afford to do the things that, that we do. But overall, like, this is, for me, these are the things that, um, that a leader should, should motivate and inspire people to be and service. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, guys. We're running out of time. I wish I could take more questions, but time is over. But I would like to leave you with one thing. Uh, music is a universal language. No matter where you are, what color you are, it all brings us together. Now, in the words of the great Nelson Mandela, he said, if you speak to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. But if you speak to a man in his language, that goes to his heart. Now, music is a language to the soul. Let's use music to bring about social change to our communities. Thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. A big round out to our panelists. We'd like to thank our panelists, and right now we're going to take a break and resume our program promptly at 3.15. Remember, please use the summit hashtags, hashtag Yali2018, and hashtag MyMandelaLegacy. Thank you.